Black Women Talk Politics. I'm Sheila Strang Clark. I'm Sabria Williams. And welcome back to another show. We've got a busy, busy. Always. It seems but- like. Within the last 24 to 48 oh, hours, like... But it's a Friday night president, right? So it's a Friday night president. That's true. Still he is. It. Like, Friday mm-hmm. nights is like, you know, well, I guess he figured, you know, mm-hmm. he has to shake up the weekend news. Right. Because Wednesday, when we were talking about, because we do prepare. So we, <laughs> we are preparing. And Wednesday, and so then by today, Wednesday's topics are sort of, not scrapped, but sort of pushed back down on, like, the roster of how we're going to talk about the show, because... Because um, yeah, Friday night changed Friday everything. Friday night changes everything. Well, you know, for those of you guys who are listening to us from week to week, just want to say we did have a show for you, like a fabulous show. Awesome. That we were going to share with you last week. Um, but unfortunately, we had to pull that back um, from uh, making it public. And I mean, I guess that's what happens as your podcast grows. You know, sometimes you have shows that are a little controversial. controversial. We were talking about the topic of should we live in a policeless society? And so sparked really great conversation between us and our guests. But unfortunately, we can't share it with you um, because potentially some of the comments would be um, misinterpreted. And mm-hmm. we want to always respect always, uh, yeah. our, our guests and, and their preferences. But I think, you know, we did have a really cool conversation we about did. what would the world be like if there were no police, you know? Yeah. And I think, you know, Sabria, you had a take on it. That- yeah, I just couldn't wrap my head around it. But, I mean, it's, we all, like I said, we're trying to be we're respectful, but we, so. It was yeah, an interesting it. conversation. It was a great conversation. It was, I kind of was talking about the ability of the community to police itself, which I think in some ways it's really. Um, Absolutely. It's something that we all need to, to learn different ways to mediate conflict. But I think we kind of also said there's a time and space where, you know, at this point in time in humanity, it's- <laughs> police can be helpful right. and and it's a complicated um conversation and it's not all one way yeah particularly understanding the relationship of the black community with yeah. the police but anyway so that was last week so unfortunately you guys didn't get to hear it but we'd be happy to We're- take any questions that you have you can go to our facebook page and, and we'll send this up and we can we can do the show that way yeah um but you know, so one of the things we talked about, right? Was was last, Jam- was we J- did was Jamel Hill, Hill, right? Hill and how you know crazy it was that you know the um uh, White House press secretary is asking for her to resign, calling for her resignation due to tweets uh, about our president being, or the president, not necessarily mine, <laughs> being um, a racist and surrounding himself with racists and getting a lot of flack for that. Now we're going to fast forward to right. this week. And I'm sure and- everybody saw, or at least you heard, because there was lots of folks on Twitter saying, I stand with Jamel Hill. Right. I am Jamel Hill. And um, NBA, from the NBA to the NFL, it was a lot. And her co host were on the show. Nobody's, right. they and were, it was 1 million percent support. There were very few, I think, any, if any, real pushback from the, um, from the sports world against it, what she was saying. Except for e- e- ESPN capitulated a bit because, right. you know, they, you know, she did, um, they she basically they basically came out and said, you know, we, we, we would like for our, our our host to stay in their lane. They did not discipline her. So that is, you know, some kudos to them because we know there have been other um, commentators and stuff who've been disciplined. But Jamel came out with, you know, a, a, a somewhat of a public apology. Well, or some, Well, she apologized for the way it may have made. Uh, ESPN look. Right, that's not right. apologizing for her person. And she should not have to apologize for that. And for ESPN, because what they're saying is that our commentators should not have a, a political voice in the public. They're public, they're, they're, because what they say is a direct reflection on us and our brand, they, their political opinions cannot be used in their social media, which, I mean, is ridiculous. Yeah, um, I mean, we kind of just, you know, but understanding, you know, corporations and, and their, how run. you know, of course we don't agree with it, but no. that, that's how Jamel Hill played out, right? So then yeah. we fast forward to, to now, to, to Friday, now. not even now, to Friday, Friday night lights where um, Donald Trump is in Huntsville, Alabama at a rally to become president again because I guess he <laughs> doesn't realize that he's already president. This is the biggest crowds um, ever. Biggest crowds crowd. ever. <laughs> and he, you know, he called on, um, well, even, so so there, so there, this is twofold. I mean, things are happening simultaneously. So he's having right now literally a beef with the NFL and the NBA 
at the same time, which is <laughs> unprecedented in the presidency. But so the end, and we'll, I'll do NBA really quickly because it, it's smaller, um, not it, it, not in, in what it means, but just it's, it's not getting as much play. But he was at a rally and he was, um, but I think the tweet was yesterday morning when he was talking about how if Steph Curry, he hasn't um, accepted... You know, he's not going to, it's a great honor to come to the White House. And um, since Steph Curry is hesitating, the invitation is withdrawn. So that was Saturday morning, yesterday on the 23rd. But Steph Curry was sort of like, no, I'm not going. He pretty much said that after the championship in June when asked, because this was sort of, you know, the reoccurring theme for the, um, after the Super Bowl, they were like, we're not going. Right, because that's and what so, I was going to say. Other people, so other people, people have going. said that they're not going. The Patriots, Patriots said that they go. were going. Right, yeah. Tom Brady didn't go, and people are saying, well, it's because his mom had cancer. Well, also because your wife hates the president. So I'm going to, you know. But so what I appreciated was one of the first and, and most, um, uh, the loudest voice came from LeBron James, who, if you know, Steph Curry, his Warriors beat LeBron's uh, Cleveland Cavaliers in the championship, but he was um, at Donald Trump, you bum, Steph Curry 30, already said he ain't going, so therefore ain't no invitation. Mm-hmm. Uh, going to the White House was a great honor until you showed up. <laughs> that was, I mean, and that's from not only the, one of the biggest players in the in the NBA, but the opponent who, I mean, so he, the it's ridiculous. Chris Paul, with you know, his tweet was, with everything that's going on in our country, why are you focused on who's kneeling and visiting the White House? Um, which speaks volumes. I mean, we, we recognize that this is the distractor in chief. And a lot of times we have to look, read between the lines. And I think we say that a lot on this show. It's like the Friday night, his Friday night whatevers are a bigger distraction to what's coming down the line. We have North Korea. We have health care. We have all of these things that are major issues and people are feeling fear and anxiety about. But you want to make up reasons to, I guess, get applause in Huntsville, Alabama, where, by the way, he was talking, he was talking in uh, in NFL, sort of going in on Kaepernick without, not by name, but he did refer to him as a son of a bitch, which I thought was, you know, interesting coming from (laughs) Donald Trump. But um, what he's saying is that the NFL owners should start releasing players who are kneeling and disrespecting the flag. Um, and how Goodell should start firing people. And this is in Huntsville, Alabama, getting a crowd who has no NFL team riled up. But I wish if, if he had said something about it, and if they're doing it at Bama, let's see what happens. It would have been silent. You probably would have been able to hear a pin drop. Um, but he is in Alabama talking about NFL. Um, and so it's just, and because of, of him saying this and, and just going and despairing the NFL, he was like, you know, if the NFL fans refuse to go to games until players disres- stop disrespecting our flag and country, you will see a change uh, a, a change take place fast. Fire or suspend. So these are tweets. I mean, he's tweeting from Friday to now to Sunday. So three days of tweets. Um, NFL attendance ratings are way down, he continued. Um, boring games, yet... Uh, get but many stay away because they love our country league should back the usa and so roger goodell who is the commissioner of nfl is like whoa i mean and he's his stance is that what the president is doing is divisive and we want to now it's his stance, right now right? You know, of I mean, course it, it i mean t- it took the, it took well it the takes- president to come out and basically try to boss them around oh, right. well like, and he's when, messing with their money and basically <laughs> they're like dude money. like for real i mean if anyone probably doesn't see the president as presidential mm-hmm. it's the other corporate owners that have you know lots of resources who help Absolutely. to put him there so it is interesting that now you have this statement from the nfl Absolutely. which they're saying you know our people have the right to protest peacefully absolutely etc well, etc well, you know? even trump's boy um patriots you know ceo robert Kraft. um um, who donated to you know Trump's inauguration? I mean, he was immediate. And, you know, I mean, I'm, I am deeply disappointed by the tone and comments made by the president on Friday. I am proud to 
to be associated with so many players who make such tremendous contributions in positively impacting our communities. Their efforts both on and off the field help bring people together and make our community stronger, he added. Um, There's no greater unifier in this country than sports and unfortunately nothing more divisive than politics. So even his people, even his, because now Trump is, you know, he is going against, like he normally does, his best interests, right? So these NFL players who largely support him and now he's calling for, you know, people to to strike i mean not go to 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 not come to games to stop watching because players are exercising their constitutional right to you know peaceful and peaceful protest it's it's really interesting um i will say that i am still we are as a family unfortunately as much as it hurts we are you know still boycotting the nfl but i watching espn is not uh, included in that, and so watching, <laughs> we can still I, watch I can still Hill. watch, watch right? Center. So watch Sports Center and, and coverage, and seeing this morning the Ravens coach John Harbaugh joined, you know, locked arms in. They were playing in London against the Jacksonville Jaguars, and even Ray Lewis taking a knee. Shockingly, um, it made me feel good, and all of the Jacksonville Jaguars were doing the same. The um, Shahid Khan, who's an owner of the part owner of the Jaguars, he's Pakistani American um, billionaire businessman. He was locked arms. So there's a show of solidarity around the league that is giving a big middle finger to Donald Trump, and I'm pretty happy <laughs> about that. It's what it's saying is that you're not going to divide. You are you're so divisive, and sports has only been a place of bringing it. it and that's at least that's the concept, right? Mm-hmm. That the NFL, the NBA, at this point, we're bringing people together. And so not since the days of segregation in sports has it been where things were divided. Now that we've come together, there's been what the idea is you can go and watch your football game. You can go to the little league and have these like moments of um, levity. And now you're trying to now bring heaviness on our, you know, America's pastimes. And I hope that maybe this you know, is where we're not having it. We're just- well, and I think, like, I think, you know, when you talk about America's like, pastime or America's sport, right, and you have football mm-hmm. and, you know, and, and people want everyone to grin and bear it, you know, in terms of um, these athletes. And it's just, it's like step and fetch it. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Like, you could, you know, be Bojangles and dance and sing. And, you know, even though we made you come in the back door, even though we shorted your check, and even though we'll kick you on the way out, mm-hmm. right? And so when people are like, no, we're going to take advantage of our celebrity and use it, you know, then yes. there's this criticism that um, they're being unpatriotic. Yep. Uh, and, and maybe, you know, and, and I would say, sure they are. And that's intentional, and right? That's, intentional. that's the whole point. But then you have... Um, but I don't know. Is it unpatriotic? I am not saying I hate... What I'm saying is I. it's like if I criticize my brother, I don't... I'm not being anti-brother. I just want us to, to, to have a better relationship. What I think Kaepernick and now what people are saying is, look, I want to have a better relationship with the country that I love. That is not unpatriotic. To criticize where you are is not unpatriotic. You are not burning a flag. You are not spitting on a flag. What you're saying is, I need you to do better by me flag. And that's very different than being unpatriotic. And people are, and that's why, that's what Donald Trump is trying to make it. But we are here in this country and we have a right. We fight. Do you know why we fight in foreign lands? So that we can come here and be free to say right. things peacefully and have a dialogue. Right. That Well, that's why I think, you know... I look at um, Donald Trump a lot. I talk about him being, you know, a dictator. It's it's a bully bully pulpit, you know. We talk about um, basically using his power to silence, detract, you know, folks who disagree. But here, you know, this is what they want. They want these folks to come entertain America and not... Make a stand, take a stand in their arena where where that's their that's their stage, that's right. their, that's their nine to five, right? So, and then they're supposed to be above, you know, being disillusioned, being uh, angry because but they then, let but, them in, right? But we then made our but then our own president takes the opportunity at every chance okay. to push out whatever he wants with most of the time, which is very divisive, right? So the, so the, the football game is supposed to be some sacred place where we're not supposed to have political views, but you as the president can say there's good guys on both sides. You could say son of a bitch about a black man in public in Alabama. And it's okay. I'm like, come on. 
it's foolishness. This is why I don't even watch football to begin with because it's just a whole bunch of hypocrisy. I could I could care less about this whole thing except for to say I'm happy to see other other yeah. other teammates. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I the NFL owners to me in some ways mm-hmm. This is a marketing. This is an oh, opportunity absolutely. for them to just say, "Oh, look! How, this is how we do support mm-hmm. black people." Look, mm-hmm. dudes, y'all wasn't stepping up until the president basically tried to tell you right. what to do with your business. Exactly. So then you took it personal, so it's funny. yeah, right. But I am happy to see that at this point, it's happening. It's more people. So we know these people aren't getting fired. We know the NFL has no other choice. Like we heard this morning on television, one of these analysts was saying, listen, they have no other choice but to say, we're okay with this. Because now, you know, we've got more people, right? It's not just Colin. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's just, it's ironic to me that folks expect... And even if we're not talking about Donald Trump, because we know he's not a logical thinking person, no. but even the people that he surrounds himself with, they expect, they want football to be void of politics. But every part of our country, um, every political opportunity, they're bringing race into it. Absolutely. They're bringing you know, politics into it. So why should football be any different? And you can't really do that when you have a president who is like Donald Trump. I mean, you can't. I mean, he's he is going for everybody. And so even if you don't want to be political, I mean, there are, I mean, millions, not millions, but a lot of these players who are locking arms and taking knees, they didn't do it last week. They weren't doing it the week before, but you're bringing me in. You're making me now have to, to, to say, okay, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to go with this side because this is what I was thinking. I may not have expressed it because you know what? I wanted to stay, you know, behind the scenes, but you're now pulling me out. You're pulling me into the front lines where I didn't necessarily want to be and you're I'm, you're making me draw my line in the sand and it's not on your side um what i will say is that it's funny because the nba we were talking earlier about has more liberties and they're always the nba is always more vocal and it, it's probably because of the makeup of what their fan base looks like and what the player base looks like it's largely african-american so they've been able to so lebron james saying something chris paul saying something it's always easy but right now i feel like the NFL is sort of coming into that, and I'm, I'm happy. I feel like they should have a voice. The voice I would like to hear is Colin Kaepernick's. I mean, I feel like you've been quiet, and this is a monster that a machine that you didn't realize was going to get this big. But I believe that at this point, you um, owe your fans, you owe us who are not watching this game that we love for you a comment, a statement to say thank you minimally. Thank you, New York. Thank you to the players today. Even if you choose right now to do it, it's not too late. But I would call for Colin Kaepernick to make a statement or minimally a thank you to those of us who are standing with him. I think that is something that, you know, just out of respect you should do because we are respecting you and not watching this game. Well, and also, like, I mean, I guess that would be cool. You know, I think at this point it's way bigger than him. Absolutely. It's way bigger than him. And, and you know, a lot of times a movement, it's like Rosa Parks, right? Like she was just didn't want to get up, you know? She just did not. She said, but she my, was still, she after said, that, she was still at every march. Right, but, right, but I guess I'm saying that there is a cultivation that has to happen with people. So hopefully mm-hmm. behind the scenes, like I don't know this dude. Like maybe he's a shy dude. Maybe he's not one that likes public speaking. I'm saying this where I say there's people. Tweet it. That can help with this guy <laughs> to get just up. Tweet, thank you. But, Maybe there's that or there's, I'm just talking about there's um, some probably cultivation that could mm-hmm. happen with him. Um, hopefully people are whispering his, in his ear, you know, um, hopefully that he does get up and say something. But hey, you know, he may need to pass the torch to someone else too, right. which I think that would be cool too oh, because absolutely. we were talking about earlier. Okay, so now you have LeBron James, you know, now you have you know, Steph Curry. I don't mm-hmm. know who else you have. But so now you've got people that if, if people were poo pooing Colin like he this dude didn't have no talent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well everybody knows LeBron has, has talent. talent. Right. Everybody knows that LeBron is the story of, you know, in some ways mm-hmm. you love him or hate him, but mm-hmm. he's he's down for his community, he's down for his family. So what what happens now? I mean, everybody kneeling down in the whole stadium, then what? You know, so I do think there needs to be some organization and some type of plan of action that goes beyond everybody taking a knee. Because at the end of the day, that's great. It's symbolic. But we know black people get killed every single day. Every day. And that's not going to stop anybody from getting shot tonight. Mm-hmm. So 
what happens next? And I think I think it's a wonderful opportunity to leverage all this energy. Yep. You know, um, I would like I to see too. these NFL owners. They're so on board. We'll put some money up. Yep, put right. some money up into some of these anti-violence yeah. initiatives. You know, why are folks getting arrested? Because folks are already out there doing different things. It's a whole. It's a whole realm of reasons why we see black people getting shot and killed. But some of it is about having a response to poverty yeah. that's happening. In the, so let's put some money up. Let's let's get Bill Belichick and all these other people. Right. Put a million dollars into Trump campaign. Put a Remember. million dollars into something that it intentionally works against racism. Yes. I'd rather see that all day long than people taking a knee because that's not going to stop somebody from getting killed. But the knee, is, the knee is the knee is the road to the money. You know, we have to see it like that. The knee is them taking the knee is the is the is so Colin taking a knee and saying, look, I'm doing it because of this issue is bringing attention to the issue. So now, especially that the owners are now involved. Yes, they can now invest in the communities where a lot of their fan base and a lot of their players come from and should. Absolutely. But without the knee, then there's no there's no movement. Well, I think the knee, you know, it, again, you have to, it's just like Rosa Parks not getting up from the bus. You mm -hmm. have to have the symbol. Yeah. And, and then, the and then yep. the symbol then sparks other people to say, uh, to pay attention. And then where does it go Move from forward. there? But you know, it has to go somewhere, somewhere. beyond just this. So that's kind of, so what I'm hoping next. that I'm hoping that this is it. I'm hoping that this is that momentum shift that makes, that makes the, it going somewhere else and not just, on the field with the knee, and then come February, it's over. Yeah, well, so I, 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 we'll I second tuned. your point though about let's let's hear from Colin Kaepernick, mm -hmm. let's hear from his people, let's hear like I said, just some a tweet other of thank you, so yeah, we some other people, if he has Spike Lee mm -hmm. or whoever mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. Al, Al Sharpton, whoever, right. just come somebody. But it doesn't have brother. to be, and he doesn't have to then take ownership of this leader role. We know we don't believe. I don't believe that he is, you know, a civil rights leader. But I, like I said, but you started this, and we are following you. We are supporting you and so a like i said a thank you is enough and then you can step out of the way and let the real the real people who not the real people because you are a real person but the real um maybe who wants civil to rights the right the right. real person who wants to or the not the person who wants to lead the movement come forward right. and you can just be like the rosa parks and just come you know if if colin hadn't taken a knee if rosa hadn't taken the bus and, and definitely it's a wide comparison and he is not a rosa parks but we're just using it. Which is right. We're just using it, it as an example of sometimes right. a, an act that you take, take as a person yep. becomes Civil a symbol for something yep. much bigger than you. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And so, um, but then when that happens, you right. know, that you has be to ready. be cultivated. It yeah. has to be ready. And you have to understand where your place is doing. in it. Absolutely. And share your place with someone else as well if you need it, if you want to, yep. you know? So, um, anyway, it's been a lot of um, happenings on that front. Um, yeah. I, I, I do appreciate, though, I guess to bring this segment to a close, that today is Sunday. Today is football day. So for it those is. people who are watching football, and I would like it to say, for you, Sabria, who's protesting, I am willing, as your co-host, mm -hmm. to give you a reprieve only for today <laughs> if you want to witness in real time What's going to happen in all these games? I think today is going to be why it is. Right. Today you is going to be an interesting day to just bear the, witness to all of it. You know, know who's with you, oh, who's not with you. Thank you, Sheila. So I'm, I'm you're my granting girl. you that you. reprieve today, so you can bear. And witness. if I was going to, I wish no, I would have known really this for, morning when the Ravens were playing. It's for research, <laughs> really. I'm giving it you is. this it's for research. research for next week's show. Thank you, I, and I will just think about that. That is a great, you know, it's good. That takes a lot of weight off my chest. Thank you, Sheila. <laughs> All right, now, oh, now so going, going, now going back to heavy, right, right? Internationally, what so we're we just going to talk a little bit um, about what's happening internationally. Of course, the Russia investigation is still going on. Always, you know, I think as we've talked about, this is going to just continue to go on for some time. It's you know, just one of those undercurrent it's quiet and, it is but i know. feel like it's quietly gaining momentum i i feel like the way that what were the the mumblings that you hear it's not it's not a, it doesn't seem like it's going to be a great outcome for the white house wh whether anything happens wh the report i don't believe it's going to be favorable but also you have to understand that trump's friday is for a distraction on all this other real stuff, That's right? True. So while the NBA is is real, the NFL it's definitely real, and, and those are important issues. 
the Russian interference and, and other issues like North Korea could be, you know, I guess, nuclear, literally. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have to be aware and not let certain distractions um, remove us from certain real issues that we got to watch. Right. So we know Robert Mueller, who is the uh, special counsel, mm -hmm. um, he asked the White House for a range of documents this week, including um, information on the, the firing um, of yeah. um, James Comey, um, also about that meeting that his son, Don Jr., had. Um, as well as um, 13 other areas of interest. Right. Um, we know they're especially continue to be interested in uh, Michael Flynn, who was ousted. ousted. And then, of course, you know, James Cole, who was also ousted. Mm -hmm. And the special counsel asked for documents about how the White House responded to questions about the June 2016 meeting with uh, Trump's son, Don so, yeah. Jr., right? And so... Also, um, you know, continuing to remind people that this was the meeting where it was, quote unquote, about adoption. And then really it was about, you know, hey, I'm going to hook you up with some info about Clinton, Clinton. so yeah. that you can, you know, utilize this to uh, damage her chances and boost your chances. Has a baby been adopted? <laughs> I just, I was, I mean, I'm just gonna put that out there too. I mean, I was was like, there, is there a baby? And then they actually went on television and tried to link it all together somehow. To, I mean, you know, deceit is a wiry web. That's all I want to say. It is. Um, so we'll watch the Russia investigation. I think that's the news for now. I yeah. think even uh, uh, more, I guess, relevant news to our own national security yeah. is this whole thing with North Korea. And so you know, and that makes me nervous. Yeah, it should. I think it should because you know you've got first of Too all unstable. Like I thought they were going to take this dude's Twitter account. First of all, I no. thought that was the whole point no. of bringing in Kelly. You know, nope. was that Kelly was the chief of staff, nope. and he was going to like they were going to deactivate his Twitter handle, but they haven't. And so not only does he tweet about you know fire this person, this you know this person should be ashamed, but you know on a on a local level, on a <laughs> domestic level, you know, but also he tweets you know things about. Uh, other foreign leaders and, and those who have nuclear weapons, right? right? So, you know... Who are not our allies. No, I mean, you know, who are our enemies, sworn enemies. So you've got these two... I Unstable. Unstated, bullheaded men that are back and forth name-calling on Twitter, you know... Um, what was the word we, we learned this week? Right, so... Do, uh, Dotard. Do dotard. Dotard, right? So we were talking about this. I had no idea what a dotard was. Me either. I looked it up. I, I knew that, I knew that, you know, I knew some other words that right. sounded like dotard, right. so which I know were not complimentary. So right. I was like, this is an <laughs> insult, but I'm not sure exactly. So what does it mean? You know, we looked this up. So it means an old person um, who's become weak or senile. Right. Which is spot on. It seems like this that is could be a spot on description of, of the president of the United States. Yeah, so because um, because Trump called Kim Little Rocket, Little Man. Rocket Man. I don't know right. why he loves these little like Little Marco or you know. Right. So he called him Little Rocket Man, and that the United States would totally destroy, destroy. North Korea in defense of itself or its allies. And he said Kim was on. And a he said that at the mission. UN. I mean, it's not like he's even saying it on a, just in Twitter. I mean, he's saying these in, in internet. I mean, in platforms, it's and places where it's like, what are you saying? I mean, and if you. I, I don't know. It, it was yeah. So then he said that right, and then also at the in in uh, Alabama he said the same thing yeah. right, and then so Kim right not to be outdone, not to be outdone. right. He in turn called Trump a frightened dog, <laughs> a mentally deranged U.S. dotard or detard, mm -hmm. and he also said, <laughs> oh goodness, a mentally deranged person full of megalomania. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at one point referred to him as President Evil. Now that is, and that not many of those things I can disagree with. You know, I, I mean, mean but... you you would, you would <laughs> laugh at this stuff, except for this is like real this is stuff. Like, he's a world leader. This is the stuff that movies is made no, of, and not they have good their movies. Finger literally on the button. Yeah, both of these idiots, and they're and they're now sort of like, you know, going to the fence of each other's countries. Like I'm going to see how close I can get with my, you know, weapons or bomber jets or whatever we have. So we as the American people are sitting here and, you know, the people of North Korea and South Korea, unfortunately, who are innocent in this and watching these two ego driven idiots, 
you know, play, you know, a game of chicken. With and, our here, lives. and here's what I'm saying. Like, this is where the Republicans need to get their boy in One million percent. You know, because here's what they said right here. None other than Trump himself is on a suicide miss- mission. In case innocent lives of the U.S. are harmed because of the suicide attack, Trump will be held totally responsible. And you know what? I believe that's true. I really do percent. believe do that it, if there's a bomb that comes over here, or even if, you know, our, we have some base, I believe, in Guam or mm-hmm. places that are really close to North Korea, yeah, the that if there's some Guam, kind of, yeah. you know, or even if some of our allies like Japan, you know, who are very close to um, North Korea, have there's some type of negative outcome for them from a military perspective. Well, South most Korea certain, is mo- going to be most devastated, and they are our, yeah. I mean, it's... I, Thank I, you for, for mentioning that. <laughs> um, I'm saying that most certainly the Republicans right. and Trump will be held responsible. And so, you know, I don't know why. I do understand this, that when you listen to other people who have a little bit more sense than mm-hmm. him, they mm-hmm. say well, there's no way in the world we should be contemplating any type of military action no, with ever. North Korea. And even if we were, you know, North Korea probably would get destroyed, but not at but the, so would we so would what, also right. we would suffer suffer casualties. They said the only thing that makes sense with North Korea is economic sanctions of some sort. Yep. So I mean, why are we doing all this bluffing and BSing? You know, because first of all, you know, wor- wars have been started over words. Um, we know words have a lot of power. Just so. in uh with normal people who don't have red buttons to push, right? right? So then we have this dude parading all of his toys through the country, and we're just going to say, try me, try me, try me. Now, yes. I, I don't, I I hope, you know, because everyone wants to, you know, posture so so confident, like all these uh, Republican people. Oh, there's no way that they would. But you really can't say what somebody would or wouldn't do. I think the tone really needs to be scaled back. You know, if it's really about economic sanctions, then somebody needs to get on that Twitter handle and just let's just change the message. It doesn't mean I I, I just think megalomaniac is a great word Mm -hmm. because it just talks about this ego that they both have. And I hope someone with some sense starts to control the conversation, because personally, if I lived over in that part of the world, I would be really, really concerned. I'm I'm on this side of the world and i'm really really concerned and nervous i mean it's just i mean he was he floor he he they flew warplanes close to north korea's coast on saturday i mean that's that's what that's where we are that's what we're doing and you know on twitter you know he trump responded to foreign minister re uh young who's speech um with yet another threat saying that he heard Mr. Ri's speech and using his recently coined nickname for North Korea leader Kim Jong-un, Mr. Trump wrote, if he echoes thoughts of Little Rocket Man, they won't be around much longer. And, so, and, right. And these words, they won't be around. around like, I mean, what does that mean? Yeah. Right. So like, are you going to wipe out a whole country? Is that what you're planning to do? I mean, that we got to be we have to be aware we have to. I mean, this is something to march in the streets about. No war against North Korea, honestly. Yeah. I know how we're, we're supposed to be. Te- we teach our kids that words matter. One, we teach our kids that words matter, and these are fighting words. These you know, in words. most places, you know, you're not going to be around much we, longer. It's going right. to draw a response. And a lot of things and, we taught our children, Trump has now debunked and said, "Well, no, you can do this and become president." Yeah, so. and I think that's the most concerning part of it all. Well, we obviously will be keeping our eyes on North yeah. Korea, and you know. And we want peace. Nobody wants a war, but Donald Trump. It seems like, no, and, and Kim Jong Un, who are both unstable. You know, it's yes, yeah, this whole last word syndrome. You know, who's gonna have the He's last word? The last and word. you know, yeah. So, well, you know, speaking of last word, you know, the this uh, reconciliation period mm-hmm. is coming to conclusion, right? So we know that reconciliation is the way that the Republicans have been trying to um, repeal Obamacare, Obamacare yep. because it allows September them, 30th, that's that's D-Day, folks. Keep your fingers So crossed. it allows them, without needing Democratic mm-hmm. votes, to change the legislation by this special process called reconciliation. We talked right. about that before. But, of course, this is what they want. So this is, you know, we're, we are, today's the 24th. 24th. So we're six, six days, days out. Away. So they are now in desperate, desperate, desperate mode right. trying to get something passed. And here comes the Graham-Cassidy bill. Right. And so in 
again on Friday, um, Trump blasts McCain because McCain's like, hey, I'm not voting for this bill. It's, you know, it's still pre-existing conditions. There's still major issues. 30 million people will not be covered. I mean, it's so while they have gone and done their tweaks, it's it's sort of the Band-Aid from the Band-Aid. They don't even um, have the CBO score yet, They don't yet, have the do CBO they? score yet. They do not have the support of any of the major health organizations, AMA, American Alzheimer's, not autism, not, nobody's supporting this bill. Also, Paul Rand, so he was very heavy in his disapproval of McCain and his um, non-support of the bill. He was a little lighter with Paul Rand saying, hey, you know, maybe he'll come around. Mm -hmm. Well, this morning on Meet the Press, Paul Rand was a guest and said, eh, not going to come around mm -hmm. um, until this, until it's changed, which I guess from now until the 30th, it could be, but probably won't be um, because it's already there. They're, so They're saying this bill is very similar to Obamacare. That's what they're right. saying, which, you know. Um, well, no, Obamacare had provisions for pre-existing conditions. Mm -hmm. This bill does not in the same way. It, it still leaves you out and having to pay because you can get coverage, but you cannot get care. So I can get coverage because, I, but I still have to pay these exorbitant routes. So how am I going to get that care? Mm -hmm. So it's, it, they're trying to double talk and make it seem like, oh, it no, is a lot of get, double talk, it's, right? Because like for, for the conservatives, you know, it's repeal. But mm -hmm. for the people who are moderates, oh, this is still really close to Obamacare. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line that we know, and we're looking at like the Kaiser Found Family Foundation's website, right? Because they, if you guys haven't checked out that website, kff.org, you should, you should because yeah. they do a lot of um, easy to understand breakdowns of healthcare policy. And so they talked about comparing the graham Cassidy repeal to the current, bit, to the current Obamacare plan, mm -hmm. you know, how do the plans approach different things like subsidies for people with who have uh, individual market plans, the state's role, Medicaid, women's health, uh, and Medicare? And they basically say um, that over 35 states and the District of Columbia would see a decrease in federal funds mm. for health care through the Graham-Cassidy bill. So that's a problem, right? Well, we know they're trying to rid everyone of Medicaid. I mean, Medicaid is... They're that's not what they want at all. So we know that that's gone. So that's federal funded. So that means Medicaid. That's a code word for Medicaid. Right. They make, when it comes to Medicaid, you know, some of the things, some of the ways this bill impacts Medicaid is it ends the ACA funding and partially, only partially replaces it with a block grant that expires after 2026. And when they're mm -hmm. moving it to the states, you know, the, the thing is that each state can come up with their, their own, own yep, their idea own, of how it should be. Right, exactly. So that means that that federal, the advantage of this kind of federal, what I consider oversight and protection, protection yeah. for the vast majority of people can be compromised state by right. state. So Planned Parenthood, gone in all the Bible, right. Bible, right. Bible Bill, gone. Right. It also <laughs> so shifts it funding from Medicaid expansion states to non-expansion states. Now, this is important, right, because... All of the, a lot of these red states refused Medicaid expansion. They refused it, right? So this then punishes those mm -hmm. states, but then gives the opportunity to states who said they didn't want it in the first place. Yep. So, you know, you're, when it came time for that grandstanding, you compromised the health care for your lowest income people. But now you're going to take the money from the states that was like, yeah, I want to help the lowest income people. And then gives it to those people that said they didn't want it in the first mm -hmm. place. Also, there's no Medicaid coverage for childless adults. Now, this mm. is very um, difficult. This is terrible, yeah. right? So if you're poor, that's how you're eligible how you're for eligible. Medicaid. Right. But if you don't have a child, right. obviously in this new bill, your health really doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. So this goes back to this. Then that, that should be, dis so you're discriminating against me because I have, I mean. Because you have no children because this goes back to this whole facade of, you know, you pull yourself up by your bootstraps, right? right? It boots, bootstraps. Bootstraps, yeah. It ignores you know, all the things. The reality that, we talk that people about. are just poor who are still trying to pull it up by the bootstraps. You know, it, it ignores the fact that our federal minimum wage sucks. Mm -hmm. You know, we have already studied. And our healthcare system still sucks, no know, matter what it is. Even I don't under care if Obama you worked care. 40 hours a day, excuse me, 40 hours mm -hmm. a week mm -hmm. at, you know, $12 an hour, $13 an hour. You, can't you know, which, right. So you're making like, you know, less than $30,000. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no way you could afford rent 
food and health care. You can't do it. You know, there's this notion that everybody that's on Medicaid doesn't work. Right. Which is a which, false no, notion. No, most people you know? on Medicaid do work. <laughs> so, I mean, it's people. Or their children who can't work. That's just, why. There's that's just this, this tremendous gap in understanding amongst folks that have had health insurance their whole life whole about life. what it really yeah. costs and how much your tr your check can stretch right. if you make right. less than thirty thousand dollars a year. I was trying to have this conversation with someone who is you know totally against you know Obamacare ACA and, and I'm like well you know let's see what the changes are and I was like well for you if there are changes and you have to pay you know even a hundred dollars more a month you can but you can you imagine the person that is poor and can't i mean they can't even pay their premiums where they are now they i mean they're choosing between car not even car insurance but, but between health care and food what you're saying to them then is it, it's impossible for me to have health care it is impossible for me to mm -hmm. enter a system to sustain my health to then go out and work and then you wonder why the emergency room becomes everybody's you know, first care for right. primary care physician. And the ambulance is the ride to and the, the and, Right, and the you ambulance. I mean? I mean, so that's you know? right. Because I can't, right, I can't, <laughs> how am I Ubering? And, I mean, then, and then you get the bill and right. you owe $500 for the ambulance, ambulance ride. Right. You owe, you know, $1,000 for the for emergency For every test, every test you have. You know, so, I mean, and then you have debt yeah. and then you have poor credit. So then you can't get a it's place a to live. So, I mean, it, yeah. it's just this cycle. Um, I mean, uh, and healthcare should be, we should be guaranteed healthcare, I right? I mean, every, every, the thing to me is this. We know people need three things. They need shelter, yep. they need food, and they need healthy, healthy. bodies. Yeah. For you to do anything. And healthy bodies is first, because I can't do any of that other stuff if I'm not healthy. Right, so <laughs> if we know people need food, shelter, and health, why do we force people mm -hmm. You can only have those things if you can pay for right. them. Yeah. Or I pick. mean, there's a lot of things pick. that I would not go to bat for, for people to have. Everybody can't yeah. have Alexis. Yeah, everybody can't okay. have Alexis. I everybody get that. can't live in a $3 million no. home. I get that. Yep. But food, shelter, and a healthy body, yeah. I think you should be entitled should. to that. Be and education. That we'll throw education. Yeah, that too. too. Because you're human. Yeah. I mean, come on. A dog gets more than that. They, they do. People be giving dogs. Extra dog treats. They make little bones for dogs and cupcakes for bones. But a person stuff. can't get food no. if they can't pay for it. Come on. So other things we talk about um, when we talk about Graham Cassidy, there's two more things I think people find interesting. Mm -hmm. It caps federal funds to states for traditional Medicaid. So, again, Medicaid, 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 mm -hmm. right? So there's it's a all, lot. Yeah, that's... But here's another thing. It eliminates funding for Medicaid family planning at Planned Parenthood clinics. Mm -hmm. So here we go again. Because you don't, you don't need, because what family planning means is that you don't have a birth control. Right. And so, right. But you see what I mean? There's no way to win. No way with to win. This, with this type of yeah. thing if you're poor, right? Because yeah. if you're poor, right, you may make a decision that you don't want to have any more kids. Right. But you can't it's afford right. $35 yeah. a month for a pack of birth control right. pills. Right. One, one pack. Yeah. So, you know, you're not going to spend your $35 on so that. Yeah. So then you're going to get pregnant again. So then right. people are going to judge you and say, why y'all keep having all these babies? Well, right. you know, it's, 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 it's very insulting and ridiculous. So, you know, if we want to have quality health care, we need Medicaid. We need Medicaid. Because, and so this bill puts that right at risk. And there's lots of other things. Again, you can go on the Kaiser Family Foundation's website. You can read all the other nuances about why this is a bad bill. You can um, read as Sabrina talked about. Do it with about. a glass of wine, though, because otherwise you can be sad. <laughs> you can, you can <laughs> read it. Don't just read it. Just read it when, you, when you're ready. <laughs> but then don't, after you read it, then you need to call Do your something. people. Call, the, call yeah. your senators. You know, there's marches that are happening. Understand we have six days. Six, six days. days. And they're going to try every trick in the book, including distracting us with the NFL and the NBA and yep. et cetera, et cetera, to pull people on protesting the football game. Why don't you, we need to be protesting this health care bill, you know, because that's going to impact Millions. more people than are going to fill up that stadium. 30 million is the estimate right now. And that's just, 
I mean, for that's a, I'm sure a very conservative number. So, you know, go to the Kaiser Family Foundation or whatever, you know, go to the American Medical Association, or the American Pediatric Association or whatever association that's medically based that you follow and get the information on why this bill is bad. And call your reps. Call your reps. If you live in Write D.C., them. you can volunteer to take letters up, yep. you know. Or you go can, knock on somebody's door just for them and say, hey. And and again, the people that we're targeting, just to bring it back around, the people, we'd like to keep the nose that we had. McCain, McCain Susan Murkowski, Murkowski, I mean, excuse me, Susan Paul, Collins um, from Paul Maine. Uh, well, she's she, she's not a no-no yet. She's, she's a no right now, but she hasn't come out and said, like McCain and Paul Rand, that they are definitely not voting. So there's Maine, and then there was one other one. Well, Lisa, Lisa Murkowski Murkowski. is another. But I don't think that they. She did say no when they asked, "Are you going to vote for it?" I saw when she was. They were. This was. She was walking, and, and press was. Like, are you voting for it? And she simply did say no. Um, but that was a couple of days ago. So I'm hoping that the four of them can stay on their nose. We definitely know Paul Rand is no, and McCain are definite nose. I mean, we're hoping that they can stay that way. Yeah, I, I, with I four, think, there's right. no way that, that it passes. So, but we need those are the people, with the exception of Paul Ryan, who voted no in the past. Yep. McCain, Susan Collins, Lisa and, Markowski. Yep. So, what you want to do is stay focused on those three people mm -hmm. tweeting. We thank you for voting no on the yep. first one. You know, support. You know, um, stay at stay, stay no, no vote stay or no. whatever. Stay and no then vote. it's really really important um, that we keep our focus and attention on those people that are Republicans. But, right. you know, at this exact juncture, the Democrats are out. Uh, you yeah. know, they, their votes are not, not needed. So you have to focus on the Republicans that are, you know, and all these people that live in these states, states where there's high yeah. poverty levels and, mm -hmm. and, and push, push, push that they continue to vote no right. or they change their vote, for their previous vote from yes And that doesn't no. mean that we can't relook or take another look at how to better the Affordable Care Act. Absolutely. That is, I mean, and I that's think what a bipartisan I think, vote though absolutely. is what we want. Absolutely. We want to vote where the Democrats' opinion mm -hmm. matters. matters. <laughs> yeah, every and the, and the people and, and you're considering the people in your in your states. And I feel like that's where people are saying that if it's either one or the other. No, no, no. There are problems with the Affordable Care Act. Let's work on making it better. We And we can even change the name. But what you can't do is take away the Medicaid and take away the choices for women and take away pre-existing conditions and then have 30 million people out of health care. That is not acceptable. No, it's totally not. Well, right. well, we're moving on kind of to what is the act up item for this week. And so we are promoting the March for Black Women, which is happening on... September 30th. September, a lot of things are happening September 30th. It's a busy day, and we know um, that there was, um, this is also a, a holiday that's a Jewish holiday, mm -hmm. so for those in our community that celebrate that holiday, you know, if you cannot come down to the march, that's okay. There's other things that you can do mm -hmm. before or after the march, um, because there's solidarity amongst us all Absolutely. as black women, and we are from many faiths and many ethnicities, and what brings us together is our pride in our community, right? So I do want to say that. But for me, you know, we are, I am going down there. We're going to go early, um, you know, and black. So here's kind of what the website is saying. You know, there's a lot of people actually, I was tweeting, so I was um, texting some of my girls like, hey, who's going? And I realized like a, lot, a lot of people don't know about this. So just here, here you go. It's black women and comrades mm -hmm. will unite and lock arms and march unapologetically at the center of the scheduled March for Racial Justice as our very own March for Black Women. We have always put it simply, black women's issues are racial justice issues. Black lived experiences related to gender, sexuality, gender identity are racial justice issues. And we need you to show up and demonstrate your support for black women and as a black woman, we need you to show up, right? You know, it's 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 one of these things where you know we have to put our feet on the ground. We do, and we have to we have to and we have to be have to show solidarity for one another. We have we are a, a big part of this voting community. We have a voice, and I think the reason this podcast was 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 dreamed up by you, Sheila, was because you wanted us to have the voice. We do vote, and we're very loyal in our vote, and we don't want to be, I guess, counted out, and so. Part, part of that is marches like this, and we have to support each other and come out. I think there's going to be some really dynamic speakers at the march. I think um, it's uh, one of my intentions is hopefully to get 
to talk to a few people who are out there and kind of get their take on what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, I just feel like it is it, the idea here with this podcast was that we do talk politics. We do. We're we're a huge, a tremendous voting block, and when we organize ourselves and come together around a particular set of issues, we can influence things. So I think that this march is just another demonstration of the fact that we're promoting here on this podcast, mm -hmm. and other women are promoting in their own way. Um, so I definitely suggest and recommend, particularly for those people that are in the Washington D.C. area. Come down Come and participate. Um, if you need more information about the march, uh, you can go to www.mamablack.org. And there is a, a link so that you can register. And we look forward to seeing you at the march. So that is kind of our act That's up. our act up. Right? And so just We're going to add the act up to call the... The, the three Republic, four Republican senators that we mentioned earlier so that we can um, or tweet out or just be act up in letting everybody know that we need a vote no for this uh, repeal and replace of the Affordable Care Act that's coming on third. At the 30th, the voting that has to be voted on by the 30th. Right, actually, and it's so interesting, the 30th and the 30th, mm -hmm. right? So I didn't, I failed to mention that the march is on the National Mall. Um, so just so folks know, and it yep. starts at 10 o'clock. So that, those are two very important pieces of information. So come out to the march. Mm -hmm. Understand the significance of the day, which also is the end, the last day for reconciliation. Um, and let's get together and continue to support an agenda that's inclusive for all of us. Oh, wow, I like that. Inclusive agenda. Yes. All right. So, well, you know, I think that's the end of our podcast for today. Mm -hmm. You know, so... Um, Again, you know, today is an interesting football day. For those of you that choose to watch, um, do so. For those of you who aren't, don't watch. I am going to, on behalf of the podcast, take the opportunity as well to kind of just check it out. Check it, see what's I want to see. I want to see what happens. I, I want to see that. what happens. I think this is going to be a really interesting day for football. Yeah, I think it is too. I don't know that I'm going to take to take it on because if I do, then that might open the floodgates for my husband, who is teetering uh -huh. uh, so i'm gonna hold on for both of us but let me know what happens and we can uh talk about it next week okay all right well for another episode of black women talk politics remember to check us out on facebook black women talk politics you can search for us in your facebook and share us with your friends share us like us um comment on us uh we can be listened to on soundcloud itunes uh, YouTube. So we look forward to li listening and hearing and getting feedback from you. Um, this is a show with an inclusive agenda. So if you have something that you want us to talk about, please feel free to tweet, um, send us a message and we'll make sure we put it on the show. All right. Take care. Have a good week. <laughs>